Hi there, it's Gabriel here, SEO manager at Hike SEO. And in this video, we'll be talking about keyword density, what it is and why it was important, what it was used for in the past. So let's get started. So in this video, you'll learn about what is keyword density, why it was important in the past, keyword was, um, the calculations to actually come up with that score, uh, the TFIDF, what that actually is, um, and FAQs, uh, frequently asked questions about keyword density, and also the best practices around using keywords in content. So what is keyword density? Keyword density is a metric used in SEO to measure the frequency of a particular keyword or phrase within a web page's content. Uh, it's expressed in a percentage of total word count. So let's say you had um, 10, 10 words that, 10 keywords that kept repeating in a piece of content and it had a thousand words. Um, that's a 1% keyword density, for example. So here's another example. Keyword mapping appears 23 times on the following page, which has over 1300 words of content, making the keyword density 1.74% for that keyword phrase. So here you can see that page, I've highlighted the keyword mapping keyword, and you'll see that it appears in those places and other places in that document. So why was keyword density important? And the, the keyword here is was, um, because it's not that important today, even though some people think it is still. So it was once considered significant, but not anymore. Um, earlier iterations of search engines used keyword density as one of the signals to determine relevance of a web page to specific search queries. So if you saw a keyword repeating more and more, it would think that that content has to do with that keyword um, and it's more relevant to it. Uh, but we know that's not necessarily the case today because of semantic search and how uh, the algorithms actually understand what the content is about. So pages with high density back then were thought to be more relevant. And it was a simplistic way to actually um, find relative, relative relevance back in, the, back in the days. But now we have much more advanced systems and machines and algorithms to actually um, calculate that much more efficiently and accurately. So what has changed over all these years then? Why aren't we using it anymore? Well, basically search engine algorithms have advanced significantly. So using semantic understanding, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and other ways to more accurately determine relevance than keyword density alone. Yes, keywords do still have a part to play because that does bring up the topic being talked about in that article or content piece but pure keyword density, not so much anymore. So how do you actually calculate it? Or how was it calculated when it was used? So you choose a target keyword or phrase or whatever words that you want to uh, calculate the keyword density for. And then you would count the number of keyword or phrase occurrences in that page or that content piece. Then you would determine the total word count for that page. And then you apply the formula basically the frequency count over the total word count times 100. So times 100 basically puts it into percentage form uh, so you know how much percentage it is. Now, what is TF-IDF? So you might see this term come up when we talk about keyword density. Um, so term frequency inverse document frequency. I know it's a mouthful. It sounds complicated. It sounds like whatever it is. It sounds very technical. Um, and, and, and it is technical, but it does have to do with keyword density. That's why we're bringing it up. So you understand what it means if you ever come across it. So TF-IDF, um, it's basically a numerical statistic used in information retrieval and text mining. So it's a bit more yeah, a scientific, analytical kind of a metric. And it measures the importance or the relevance of a term within a web page relative to a collection of web pages. You'll see how this actually is relevant in the next few bits. So let's, let's break this term down into two parts. So let's do TF, which is term frequency. So that's kind of like keyword density in, in a sense, just a different name for it. So this is the measure of how often a term appears on a web page. Um, basically, same thing as keyword density, but it doesn't have the percentage. It says it's a different name. 
And this is basically the frequency count over the total word count. Now let's go to the other half of it, the IDF, inverse document frequency. So that sounds really complicated and you'll know just in a moment what that actually means. So it's a measure of the importance of a term across a number of web pages. Uh, so the IDF value increases for terms that are rare across the entire collection of pages, but are present in only a few documents. So this basically gives you an idea how um, important, let's say, a specific keyword is in relative sense to the entire collection or the entire website. So the idea is that rare terms can be more informative or discriminating. Um, so IDF, so compli more complicated formula, but it's the logarithmic um, of the total number of pages on the site uh, divided by the number of documents containing that term. Okay, so it's a bit more complicated, but don't have to worry about this. We're mostly going to be talking about keyword density in this video. Um, so the total um, is TF IDF score is the term frequency times the IDF value. So for example, let's say the term frequency is 0 0.015, in other words, 1.5% keyword density, and the IDF is 20. So let's say there's 100 pages on that whole website and five pages uh, of that website contain that keyword, and the score, the IDF value is 20, and then we multiply the two. So we multiply 0.015 by 20, and that comes to 0 0.3. And the higher that number, the higher that score is, um, the higher the density and the more rare on the website uh, that keyword is. So what's the best keyword density? Uh, this is a trick question. <laughs> um, it's not important anymore. So it's really not that relevant to actually talk about keyword density in the grand scheme of things, especially SEO. Um, so as long as your page content has information that is highly relevant to the focused topic, then that's the key. So let's say you're talking about a specific topic. It doesn't have to use the exact keyword phrases. Um, as long as it's focused around that topic and keeps true to that topic in that document or that page, then that's what we want to do. Um, so what is keyword stuffing? You might have heard that term before. and It's definitely something you don't want to do. So this happens when a keyword has been noticeably used too often or artificially inserted within the content to increase the keyword density. And this used to be a common practice in the early 2000s, or even in the 90s when search engines first started coming out because it almost gamed the algorithm and increased the artificial relevance of that page. And that obviously get, got them, uh, got these website owners a lot more rankings, high rankings, more traffic and whatnot. So, but these days you got to understand that keyword stuffing doesn't add any more value. It actually detracts the value from the readers, the, the visitors. So please avoid this at all costs because it can actually harm your SEO. So should I use keyword variations? That's a good question. So instead of just sticking to the one keyword and using that over in multiple places in the document, even if it's organic, should we vary that up a bit? Using variations of a keyword should come naturally when writing a, an original content piece. So just kind of put it in there when it's appropriate, when it's natural. Um, and keyword research can really help with that process to find secondary keywords to use in your content to make it more interesting. Keyword density best practices. Let's dive in a bit more. So what to do, what not to do. So never aim for set keyword density because it's not being used anymore. And that can almost lead you to try to reach that score artificially. And we don't want to do that. So this metric is outdated. Just don't use it. The key, again, I'm going to say it again because it's really important, is to stay true and focused on the articles uh, or the page's topic without digressing too far from that. Okay, um, and use variations naturally uh, as often as necessary to get your points across. Or if there's sub points within that topic, fine, then include those uh, sub keywords. Focus on the topic co coverage and depth. 
that's again staying true that to that topic for that page concentrate on how much of your topic that you've covered within your content piece and how in depth that you've covered it more comprehensive articles tend to get Um, higher rankings and traffic not only because there's more information for the user more value there but also keeps them on the page longer um, and and ultimately will make them want to share that because it's a great resource um, sharing it with other users so longer form content tends to acquire more backlinks and back and get better rankings this has actually been proven there's been many studies done on this so try to opt for longer Uh, form content and how long is long well typically 1500 words at least to about 3000 words is about the sweet spot Um, anything longer than that and most users might not have the time or the patience to read such a long article but i would say between that that's a good um, length include keywords in the main areas so don't, av- don't avoid using keywords within your content. Um, that's not what we're saying here. But do use them uh, in your page title, in your meta description, in your H1 heading, um, the page URL, um, even some of the H2s, you can use variations of that keyword. Um, and that basically balances it out as well. So let's talk about Hike, Hike SEO, the platform, um, and keyword density. So Hike doesn't measure it because, like we said, it's outdated. However, in its content wizard tool, you can add keywords uh, for it to naturally use when it writes that an article for you using ChatGPT4, so AR AI to actually generate uh, that content for you to as a starting point, so that you can save some time, and then you can go and take that content that Hike generates and edit it uh, to your tone of voice, maybe add some information, remove some irrelevant information. But the cool thing is that uh, Hike automatically sprinkles in some relevant keywords and uses those in there. So it helps with making it even more relevant and focused to the topic. Uh, So that's a really great tool to use. So here's a quick screenshot of how that uh, content wizard looks. So here, um, what is the best, cheapest SEO tool for beginners is the focused um, topic uh, or the title here. And then it generates that in um, quite quickly, actually. And you can read through and it gives you an outline. And then you can expand upon that if you want. So thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions about keyword density, do let me know. Otherwise, if you haven't tried Hike SEO yet, definitely sign up today. Um, it's an amazing platform for beginners, for small business owners, and also for agencies who serve small businesses and beginners as well. So um, lots of features. It's an all-in-one suite that you can get started. Um, Yeah, so definitely sign up. Um, Link is in the screen there, and we'll see you there. All right, see you in the next video. Take care.